I can't remember who said it exactly, so forgive me if I screw it up here. I think it was Bill Parcells, though, that said, you are whatever your record says you are, which sounds great in a bubble, but is entirely not true in some cases. You could be 0-4 and be a great team and just went up against the four best teams in the league. You could be 4-0 and beat a bunch of scrub-ass teams or injured teams and you're not that good, but the record makes you look like you're great. And for the Bulls, the first four games of the season, it certainly was the story of the second one. It doesn't mean that they're a bad team by any stretch of the imagination. No, 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 no. But the context matters. The context is, is they got to play four games, including two of them against the Detroit Pistons, who are bad, without Cade Cunningham, their top player. And you say, well, he's their top player, and he's only a rookie. Yeah, we all know he is. They got to face the Pelicans at home without Zion, so they faced another team without their best player. Faced the Raptors without Pascal Siakam. So four games where they got to play teams that didn't have their best player on the floor. Still got to win those games, and the Bulls found ways to win all four of those games. So 4-0 and is 4-0, I agree, but I think a lot of us are pointing to this game on Thursday night against the Knicks and saying, this is a test. This is an opportunity to show that they're legit. And the reality is they certainly didn't ace the test. They didn't totally fail it either. And maybe that's the positive to draw from this ultimately heartbreaking loss. Yeah. That's kind of what I'm going to go with here. Because they had a chance. The Knicks were the better team on the floor most of the night, but when it came down to it, the Bulls scrapped and clawed and fought their way back into it and had a shot and chance to win it late until it was air ball. So yeah, it was that type of night. And of course, it was kind of a surreal type of experience watching this game on Thursday night because it was Joe Kim Noah night. So of course, Joe Kim Noah was there. You had so many other Bulls players from the past, you know, whether they were showing in the video package like Kirk Heinrich and so forth, or you had them there live at the game. Uh, like I saw Lou all dang, and I'm like, holy shit. You saw all these guys from Bulls teams of the past there. You know, and you obviously have Tom Thibodeau coaching the Bull, the Knicks, excuse me, who was the coach of the Bulls for several seasons during no Noah's Bulls career. You have Derrick Rose, Taj Gibson playing for the Knicks. You know, certainly have a lot of memories of them in a Bulls uniform. It's a very sentimental, kind of surreal night. You know, it's one of those examples of where you look at something and you say, that makes you feel old. Having a joke him Noah night because he's retired makes you feel a little old, doesn't it? I know it certainly does for me. It was a good trip down memory lane. I mean, it's not like it's a great trip because there were no championships involved, but there were some good times. And then, you know, obviously, there's always that big sentiment around, sentimentality around when Derrick Rose comes back to town. You know, because he was the hometown Chicago kid. He was the savior. He was going to be the guy. He was a league MVP. Like, he was supposed to be that next great franchise player for the Bulls, and just where it got to the point where he was becoming that, then you had the injuries, and he was never quite the same player again. And while on the one hand, it's fantastic to see that he has been able to come back from that and be a productive NBA player, be a good and valuable NBA player, it's heartbreaking to think about what used to be and what quite isn't anymore. And admittedly, transparently, it's a little hard to see him in a Knicks uniform. Because as a Bulls fan from back in the day, when you used to actually have rivalries that meant something, sure, I hated the Pistons, but I hated the fucking Knicks every bit as much, so if not more. I couldn't stand them fuckers. Patrick Ewan and his goddamn eight-step Georgetown gallop and flopping and farting all around. You know, John Starks and his whiny baby snowflake have acting ass always going off. You know, Anthony Mason and the stupid lines he used to shave in his head. And I used to hate that fucking team. Greg Anthony had a punchable face. Now I say had as if that was past tense. And believe me, I know about punchable faces. I used to respect the shit out of the Knicks teams, though. And I'll tell you this much, man. The NBA is so much better when there are rivalries. That's the biggest thing you're missing now is maybe you'll have some rivalries in terms of players, but it just doesn't translate the same. 
There's not that same loyalty there. There's not that same emotional connection. But when you had Bulls, Knicks in the 90s, that shit was popping. So if you're getting to a place where the league has both the New York Knicks and Chicago Bulls playing good, relevant basketball and potentially positioned to face off against each other in the playoffs, like, yeah, the league as a whole is just better off for it. And as fans, we certainly are too. And for all we know, this could be a playoff preview. And if it is, man, we could be in for an exciting series come April or May. Uh, when you look at the story of this game, it was that the Knicks were able to get up early and stayed up throughout the course of the game. You know, the Knicks were up 27 to 25 after one. You had a good shooting start with both teams being above 50% from the field in that opening stanza. In the second quarter, it was more of the same. Some good shooting on both sides. The Knicks were up 55 to 51 at half. You start to see Kemba Walker get into a bit of a rhythm. You could see that the Bulls were having some trouble defending R.J. Barrett. Um, and then in the third quarter, you know, the Knicks were able to open up a little bit of separation, and they were up 82-73 to 73 after three. And it was one of those moments where you look at the game and you say, okay, yeah, they're facing somebody that's legit now. This is a legit team. And it's going to be a big test for them in the fourth quarter to see how this Bulls team comes out and responds. Because they could kind of lay over and just whimper off into the night and take the L, or they can try and, try and scream and back and try to find a way to win this damn game. And throughout most of the fourth quarter, it looked like the Knicks were just going to win this somewhat comfortably. Because the Bulls, you found them with a little under three minutes to go, were down by 13. 13. And then they came storming back. And I mean storming back. They were even able to overcome some late possessions where the Knicks got key offensive rebounds. Like I think of the one, I think it was Mitchell Robinson had a really key killer offensive rebound with about a minute and a half to go. I'm like, that kills the momentum. This game is probably over now. And it wasn't. The Bulls kept coming. And while their defense wasn't phenomenal on this night, in the last couple of minutes of this game, it was. They put the clamps down on the Knicks, and they forced bad shots. They forced turnovers. They forced the Knicks off of their spot and really fought like hell to be able to get back into this game. And when you got to the point where Julius Randle you know, missed those free throws and the Bulls have got the ball down one with under six seconds to go, you're thinking, holy shit, the Bears can box the Bears. The Bears. The Bears. Bears football. No. So that's an addiction. Um, the Bulls looked like they had a chance to win. That last possession, though, was a little bit questionable. Like, is DeMar DeRozan really the one that you want taking the last shot? Now, maybe that's the way it came open. That's the way you drew it up, whatever. You know, I've certainly said my piece the past couple of years about Zach Levine, you know, lacking the clutch gene, and the numbers the past couple of years do back that up, no matter how much butthurt Bulls fans don't want to hear that. That's a reality. Um, but, you know, you would think that Levine would have been in a position to take the shot. But even in that case, like you could tell, Stacey King talked about it uh, at the end of the game. You could see where the problem was for DeMar DeRozan. He got to a spot where he could get an open shot. Looked like he had an open shot. But Vucevic rolled over into the corner for some reason to bring another defender in. Basically, you've got three Knicks defenders in DeRozan's face. There's no time to really be able to react. Like he's gotten to the spot now. So he hesitates, jacks up, and fucking air ball. And the Knicks hold off the Bulls 104 to 103. Ouch. Of all the teams to get your first loss of the season to, did it have to be the Knicks? Did it? Damn it. That sucks. But I will say this is try to look, not get too negative about things, and not focus too much on the bad. There was definitely that in this game. You know, this could also could be an indication of trouble to come for this Bulls team because, you know, that schedule, they talked about it again during the game, it's going to get a lot tougher here in the next few weeks. You got the Jazz on Saturday, and it's not going to get a whole lot easier. I think it was 12 of the next 13 games were against playoff teams from last year, and the one game against a non-playoff team was the fucking Warriors, and even they were in the play-in situation last year. Um, but I look at this Bulls team and say, and what was an off night for them shooting-wise, they had a very poor night shooting from three. Levine had a relatively pedestrian night shooting for him. You know, this team, down 13 with under three minutes to go, 
was able to put the clamps down on the Knicks and almost won this fucking game. In fact, they had a chance to win it at the buzzer. That's something that a good team does. This was a game, to be clear. The Bulls absolutely deserved to lose, and the Knicks absolutely deserved to win. The Knicks were clearly the better team on the floor on Thursday night. So if anything, justice was served. The Knicks ended up winning. But if you want to take any way any positives from this game, even though you might be a little bummed out that it's their first loss of the year, you might be even more bummed out it came from the fucking Knicks. More bummed out when you think about the past with like Joe Kim Noah and Derrick Rose, Taj Gibson, Kirk Heinrich, Lou Aldang, all these guys, and realize that's not here anymore. Realize you're getting a little older. So all that makes you feel badly. You can take away some positives of this game and say, you know, their defense stepped up in a big way in a big time. They were able to hit some timely shots when they really needed them. Like that Vooch three late was monstrous. Like that's what really gave you the hope and fired up the crowd like everybody was in it at that point, believing like, holy shit, the Bull- it's a one possession game. The Bulls have a chance here. And they did. They just didn't get it done tonight. But my hat's off to them for their effort and their fight. Let's go get the Jazz on Saturday night. And next time around, let's beat the goddamn Knicks, shall we?